My name is John Bussey, and I am an undergraduate student here at Washington State University. In this demonstration, I will be showing how electricity can flow through glass. In this case, it is called ionic conduction. This demo setup is a simple circuit that is plugged into the wall. There is a break in the circuit for a piece of glass tubing, a light bulb to show where the circuit is completed, and a switch and circuit breaker for safety. I also use a torch to heat the glass. In any laboratory, it is very important to have proper safety equipment. For this demonstration, I used gloves, a jacket, and boots that are resistant to flames, as well as goggles to protect my eyes. The glass tubing I use is from the pipettes here. They have a hole in the middle, typically used for carrying liquids. That hole also works for fixing the glass to either side of my circuit. Here, I have fixed the glass tubing to the ends of my circuit. Now, the circuit is complete and electricity would typically flow if the material was a room temperature conductor, such as copper. The light should glow when enough electricity flows through the material. Glass is typically an insulator though, so the material doesn't turn on. The glass tubing is made from a soda lime glass. Soda lime glass is what is usually used in windows and bottles and is made from a silicon and oxygen component called silicon dioxide mixed with some sodium oxide and calcium oxide. The sodium oxide and calcium oxide are added to decrease the melting temperature of the glass and improve the other properties. This, the silica dioxide is, is often similar chemically to some types of sand. We can tell that there are sodium ions in the glass since the flame past the glass piece is a bright orange color. We knew, this is known as the sodium flare and is, is the color of the light that is distinct to the sodium element. Here, as the glass reaches a high enough temperature, the electric is able to conduct, making the light glow. All materials can transmit some amount of electricity, although some more than others. For instance, metals can conduct more than most glasses. In addition, as materials heat it up, it transmits more electricity. This is why glass, usually considered an insulator at room temperature, conducts electricity when heated up in this demo. For electricity to flow, very small particles, the size of atoms are smaller, with a charge, need to move. In most materials, the predominant particle moving is an electron. In many glasses, the particle that flows is instead charged atoms. These atoms have lost an electron, usually called ions. In this demo, the sodium ions, which make the flame orange, are the main component to flow. This diagram is of the atomic structure of glass. Silicon dioxide forms the backbone of this glass, marked in red and black. The sodium ions, which are marked in blue, and to a lesser extent the calcium ions, which are marked in green, are the main things allowing for electricity to be transmitted. The electricity pushes these ions, causing electricity to flow. The sodium and calcium ions are known to gather together, similar to the channel you see here helping to make this conductivity easier. As the heat increases, it is also easier for the ions to push through the structure. The heat almost makes little doors for the ions to pass through. This effect can be used to make better batteries. Glass can be used in the electrolyte, or the middle part of the battery, used to allow electricity to pass between the two ends of the battery. When being used, the ions flow one way through the glass, if you know what it means from the anode to the cathode, and then the ions flow the opposite way when the battery is being recharged to store electricity. I need to thank Thomas Glasgow for originally giving me the idea for this demo. Thank you so much for watching my demonstration video.